Hey, you've tuned into Math with Mr. C. This time we're doing 19.5 Frequency Tables and Histograms, two ways to show data. We're moving on in 3, 2, 1. If you haven't already, now's your chance to check your 19.5 homework. All right, Frequency Tables and Histograms. How can you make and use a frequency table? First, we're doing frequency tables, then histograms. Mr. Maxwell timed the cross-country team in a two-mile run. How can he represent the data? Make a frequency table to show the number of times a data value or range of values occurs in a data set. So we're going to, first when we make data or collect data, we're going to get it in a kind of table like this. But we're going to try to put it into a frequency table. So what does that look like? So I'm going to show both of these at the same time. My data and then our frequency table. So from our data, I see that we made a range of frequency times. So that was first. So it's kind of like, you know, what's, what's around the lowest? Okay, I see 14 minutes and two seconds. So maybe we could start with our running times of 14 minutes. And you know, what's our, what's our longest? Oh, it goes all the way up to 23. So 14 from 23, that's a big gap. And the, the range that we pick here really doesn't matter, but we just picked that we want um, spans of about two minutes. It's uh, one minute and 59 seconds. And so we split them up and we made ranges that are all the same. Notice how they're all the same. It's very important that they're all the same. And then we go through here and we, and we see how many times did they fall in each. So for example, 14 minutes and two seconds, I would put a tally and then go back and I see 14 minutes and 25 seconds and I put another tally and you go through all of your information until you've filled in your tallies and then you have frequency which is turning your tallies into a number and we're gonna have more practice with that in a second so first we're gonna do our vocab notes I'm gonna ask for you to write the definition of each so I'm gonna expect you to write the word and underline it and then the definition. Here's our first one and we're moving on to the second one in three, two, one. Here's our second which is outlier and the third one is in three, two, one. This is our last one. This is the definition of a histogram and moving on to the second teacher example in three, two, one. So here's our second teacher example. First we talked about frequency tables and now we're going to talk about histograms. So a histogram, I see it kind of looks like a bar graph, um, but I see there's no gaps in between like the definition talked about. And it uses bars to show the frequency of equal ranges or groups of data. So what's different than a bar graph is a bar graph will just kind of have like one piece of information. It'll say like 14 minutes. Here's the people that finished at exactly 14 minutes. Here's the people that finished at exactly 16. But histograms are cool because they give you a range. And again, they're all equal with a clue word of Taco John's. And this is a histogram of exactly the same information that we showed you in the first example before the vocab notes. And we're just putting it into a, it. It kind of looks a little bit different. We don't know exactly how many people finished, um, you know, between 14 and 15 minutes. But we know exactly four people finished in this span. So first we'd title our graph cross-country team times. Next, we'd use the frequency of the data to choose the scale of the vertical axis. What that means is you'd pick what numbers here, and this, the scale is just one, two, three, four, five. They go by ones. You could also have a scale of two, so you could go zero, two, four, six, eight, depending on how big um, or how frequent these are. If you had like a thousand people race, um, you wouldn't go by ones, maybe you'd go by tens. You'd go 0, 10, 20, 30. Depends how many pieces of information you have. And then you're going to list the time intervals along the side, along the horizontal axis, and then make the bars. This is a description of how we might talk about this graph. So we'd say most of the running times cluster between 14 and 18 minutes. 14, 18, most of them cluster in this area. Most of them happen in this area. But there is a gap in the data between 20 and 22 minutes here. 
there's a zero. The running time between 22 and 24 right here, we could consider that an outlier as you've already put in your vocab notes because it's it's kind of just way out by itself. It's it's much greater than the other points in the data set. And that person might need to uh, practice more or condition more. So what does the tallest bar of the histogram represent? Try to think. The tallest bar represents that seven people completed it between 16 and 17 minutes and 59 seconds. How many running times were less than 18 minutes? So the answer to that would be I would look at both of these bars. Both of these are less than 18. And so this one would be 7. And this one would be 4. So we'd say that 11 people finished below 18 minutes. Here's our example 1. I'm going to read this, and then I'll let you know what I want you to write. A toy store owner asked the age of each child who came into his store one day. The ages of the children were, and then here are the ages. We're not going to write this, but what is the range of the ages? Try to do that in your head. So I noticed that the person that was oldest is 13, and I'm looking for the youngest, and that's 5. So the range would be 13 minus 5, which is 8. Now what do I want you to write? Well, I want you to write our data here that's underlined, and then we're going to make a frequency table here. So. You can pause the video to make three sections, age range, tallies, and frequency. You're going to have a line in between and just make your table look exactly like the one we have here. Unpausing the video when you're ready, and we're going to move on in three, two, one. And you might have realized, you know, making these tables sometimes take a little bit of time, but not too much. So I'm looking at age range three through five, and the way that I'm gonna make my tallies is I'm going to go to my data, which you can do in your notes as I do this, and I'm gonna cross off and then make a tally of ones that are between three and five. So I'm starting and I'm looking at the top and I'm going across, and that's one between three and five. There's another one, and I'm gonna make another tally. So that's two tallies, found another one, three going across and that's it so that's three and for frequency I'm gonna write a three six through eight found one found one found one all right so I got six for that one and going down the chart I am just doing that with nine through eleven as well There's two of them. There's another. For that, we got four. And then for 12 through 14, there's one. There's one. So we got three. And so now we've completed our very own frequency table. Moving on in three, two, one. Here is our frequency table that you just filled out. And for example two, we're going to take this information and we're going to make a histogram. So please pause the video and draw the histogram just like this, labeling the title and the Y axis going up and down and the X going side to side with my ranges. All right, so we're moving on because you should have that done. And we're going to fill in our data here. So looking at our frequency table in our age range of three to five, I see that three is there. So I'm going to put a bar here, 3 to 5, and I'm going to color that in. And at this time, since this is example 2, please fill in the rest of the chart using your information from here. Coming back for the answer in 3, 2, 1. Alright, so your histogram should look like this. And you don't need to write this down, but just think, if you wanted to know how many 8-year-olds shopped at the toy store, would this histogram help you? Think about it. I'm going to give you the answer in 10. So no, this would not help you because this gives you a range. And so it says how many 8-year-olds. Well, I know how many 6 to 8-year-olds, 
but a histogram gives me a range and not specifics. We'd have to go back to the original data to get that. So a histogram does not tell, help me with specifics. All right, once you've gotten to this section for independent and partners practice, you're actually going to use this section in your notes um, to fill out with Mr. C, I'm going to do two activities after this video with you. So you're not gonna need to write anything for this, but read these questions and see if you can get them right. And I'm gonna talk about the answers after you pause it in three, two, one. And there are your answers for both those problems. While you wait for the whole class instruction asking for your attention, please go to the links below for Khan Academy and we have three practice links. So do those in order. Thanks for watching this and if you have time, pick one of these two choices. You're awesome.